I've been good friends with Jake and Joe for many years now, and when they asked me if I wanted to join them on the Mongol Rally, I gave it very little thought, and then said yes. Our team of three soon became four with the addition of another friend, Toby, and together we planned our journey, we gathered equipment, and raised sponsorship money for the two different charities we were supporting, Children's Hospice UK and the Christina Noble Foundation, who work with kids in Mongolia. The first leg of our journey began at Goodwood Racetrack in the south of the UK, and that is where the rally officially began. slow, waiting for clearance to leave with an 18th car to go. We did roll paper scissors to see who would be driving around the track doing the lap before we leave and I won, so pretty nervous about that, pretty nervous about doing corners in our car. Um, yeah, waiting for our first deadline which is the 7.30 ferry to Calais. Waving both his arms around. <laughs> Up. What do you mean by <laughs> stopping nuts? Left, left lane. What, this way or that Left lane. All the way, way to the left. left. <laughs> Find that. What is that guy's just, it's just weird. randomly choosing? There goes Raven. He's just in a way. He just waved your just arms and then he left. <laughs> this is silly. This is a prime spot, we're in the first of the boat. Keep, keep going, keep going, aye. Aye, some more. 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 Oh, premium aye. spot. He put us with the motorbikes because our car's so fucking small. <laughs> So 
So we boarded the ferry OK um, from Dover and making our way to Calais. We were expecting to arrive in France and then just drive um, until we reach somewhere in Belgium that we can stop for the night. Um, the other guys have just gone off for some coffees and I'm sitting guarding the plug sockets that we found where we are charging our phones and other bits of equipment. Electricity being hard to come by. This is the one. Up. Look, I want to die. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's it. What we, we drove from Belgium across the whole of Germany to the yeah, Czech Republic and we lost our minds <laughs> gradually throughout. How we, much was it? 14 hours? 14 hours. We were driving 14 for 14 hours, driving hours on or off. I just drove for 30 minutes. <laughs> Honestly the worst experience of my life. I was genuinely terrified and I'm, I don't know how I feel to be here.
Well, if we're three quarters full, then maybe we don't need to fill up. Yeah, we're hungry. hungry. How big can it be? We've just driven through. Well, so okay. that, yeah. It doesn't make sense, does it? Um, yeah, well, no, it does make some sense because we got through Slovakia without really realising it. Like, so, and that was on, I don't know how many tanks that was on. That wasn't even on a tank of fuel, was it? Filled up at the end of um, check. And then we just drove through, yeah, we just no, drove we through Slovakia in about without an hour. <laughs> any idea. We're currently in a service station in Hungary where we camped here last night after many hours of trying to find a suitable service station that wasn't too rapey. Um, but it kind of worked out quite well because we met a guy who lives in Bulgaria who said we can go and stay at his flat and he will show us around, which, is, which will be really cool. Um, so we're currently waiting for Joe to have a shower and we've just had showers, which is nice. And then we're going to be pushing on to Romania and hopefully near to Brands Castle by the end of the day.
cousin. Bulgaria. You got the camera on the guy. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a instead of the description, now we're just going to say key words. <laughs> It does say take care when driving, particularly in life, because many roads are in poor condition. Roadworks are often unlit and unmarked. Driving standards are generally poor. Ah. Avoid confrontation with aggressive drivers who might be armed. Oh. Observe the speed limit and ensure that your vehicle is roadworthy. Spot fines are charged for minor violations. Yeah, that's really cool. Cool. Finally, uh, Romania. A guy called uh, Martin in one of the, the service stations. We got chatting with him, uh, and I mean, he seemed like a really nice chap. And he invited us to stay at his in Pleven, in Bul Bulgaria. Just going to Pleven. Um, just going to go for a sit down meal, get some money out, and uh, wait to hear from Martin. No. Just got a text from Martin. He's uh, he's described where we have to go to get to Pleven, but we're in Pleven, so I'm going to give him a text back and say, "Yeah, we're here," and uh, see where that leads to. Hello. Hello. Yeah, How you doing? Yeah. Where's the English? Really? Some time I can, some time I can. I'll try maybe 10 seconds. went to the shop around the corner and got so much food, none of which is bread or crisp or cheese, but some of it's cheese and bread. Um, and we're just cooking an amazing meal and I'm um, really looking forward to it and trying some rakia, which is like some kind of fruit liqueur, like a Bulgarian fruit liqueur. Yeah, that works. Mm. Good taste, garlic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. Rich garlic. <laughs>
Mitte der Unter. feeling too good and we're gonna set up the tents around the beach. <laughs> um, it's not the greatest weather but there you go. So <laughs> just gonna set the tents up, spend the night here and then <laughs> push on tomorrow and see where the road takes us. my birthday and the day after in Istanbul and seeing how hot it was, we decided that even though our group didn't take us to the Black Sea, we'd take a full detour here so we'd go for a swim. But we got here last night and it was kind of pouring with rain. We decided to go for a swim anyway to make the most of our time here and it was actually really nice and warm, probably more so because it was cold outside. And so we woke up this morning and went for another swim. It was a bit colder but still quite nice. Um, it's about the day behind schedule, but it doesn't really matter. It was worth it. It's just a shame that it's not sunny. But it's a nice place. east of Turkey. Um, we made it through the night in our hotel without any further incident from the uh, deaf mute guy that lives above us, um, which was nice. And um, yeah, just kind of wandering around this morning. And later today we're pushing on to Ani, which is the um, old capital of Armenia, uh, which is now in Turkey. So it's a big ruined city. Um, and then tonight camping near the Georgian border.
it's Kaya. Is from America? From, a, from this young man here. One layer. Kadir? Kaya. Good. What? Be on our way with a smile? Go away with a thousand ants. Do everything in the boat? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we woke up ridiculously early this morning um, after not really getting any sleep because it was the windiest night ever. There was wolves and gunshots and we were in an active war zone. Um, and went to see Annie, which was amazing, really glad we went to see it. And now we're getting to Georgia. I'm really excited to actually get out of Turkey, even though it's been great. Um, and be in a country where it's not Ramadan so we can actually get food that isn't crisps and cake. So, people will still drive back. Tbilisi. Tbilisi. Right. Uh, we're in Tbilisi. Uh, we got here. When did we get here? <laughs> Tell me when we got here and then I've got everything straight. Um, what is today. it? Today. today. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Three? Two or three? No, three. Whatever. So it's hungry. Um, we're in Tbilisi. Uh, we got here earlier today. Uh, the drive was fine until we got into the, into the city and then suddenly it just became hectic. We found ourselves at uh, the Tbilisi central station, the rail station, uh, ended up trying to work out, stealing their Wi-Fi to see if we could find hostels locally and some American guy who's living in Tbilisi uh, happened to wander past, noticed that we were Mongols and then kind of had a chat and we ended up just going around with him, he directed us to this hostel uh, he showed us around Tbilisi. Uh, he's a godsend. We we wouldn't well we'd have found Freedom Square, but he basically sorted us out with a pretty cheap hostel, nice restaurant, uh, and this is all after having stayed at a Georgian family's house last night. Uh, after just trying to have a camp, and yeah, the man of the house just wandered up and said, "No, no, 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 you stay at mine." <laughs> so we stayed at his. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have an easy one tonight, and then tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow is my last day uh, on this, and then I'm flying back, and uh, the rest of you are going to Mongolia. Uh, I hope uh, it goes well. I have a fucking day. <laughs> yeah, cool. Have a good flight, man. Have a good Enjoy the next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, get to Mongolia. Just do it. Say, Tyree. Thank you, man. So we're at Tbilisi International Airport, we just dropped Toby off and said our goodbyes. Um, kind of marks the end of the first bit of the trip, which is the easy bit. <laughs> and which now, hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy at all. Um, yeah, it's really sad to see Toby go. He's become a big part of the trip so far and it was weird not having him there. Yeah. But, um, Quite an emotional time. The Alto is officially under Bagley rule now. Jordan. That's what we say. <laughs> yeah, a bit of sad. 
and we're trying to push on to the Iranian border tonight but we're not sure how that's going to go or where it is or where, if it, where to go from here so yeah still don't know how to unlock the door <laughs> just left Georgia and we just had our passports stamped out and they didn't really understand any of our car documents but I think they let us through anyway um, and we're just coming up to the Armenian border um, where we may or may not be able to buy a visa to get into the country um, we're also traveling through disputed territory with Azerbaijan so it could be interesting um, yeah, we just have to see how it goes with this board crossing. Otherwise, back into Georgia. So after almost an hour at the Armenian border, we're through and it's $60 poorer, thanks to what could be an illegitimate payment. <coughs> Who knows? Um, and so we're trying to, we're on the Silk Road through Armenia now trying to push on through to as far as close to Iran as we can get but so far most of the road signs have been in Armenian which we can't read so uh, yeah could go either way really <laughs>
Um, so last night we got to the uh, Iran Turkmenistan border and it was closed. Uh, fortunately, there was some other teams there. It was actually quite nice to spend the night with other teams, kind of just chatting. Um, this morning it took maybe three or four hours to get into Turkmenistan eventually. Yeah, four hours on the border um, to get in. Lots of walking around between offices and being moved about by soldiers. Um, but yeah, we were in. one of the teams we met had been there for four days because their name wasn't on the on the Turkmenistan invite list. So I'm just glad we're not them. Um, it's about 48 degrees today. And we're just going out into the desert, which is meant to be 50 degrees plus. It's really, really hot. It's hot as a bread oven. Hot on Ramadan evening. Hotter than a bread oven on Ramadan evening. Um, We've just filled up the two jerry cans in the car with with petrol for the equivalent of about 10 pounds for 60 liters of fuel. So that's the, that's the upside of Turkmenistan. And we've just been through the capital, which is literally made of marble and gold. So we're pushing on to the gas crater tonight and hopefully we won't die of heat exhaustion. It's a possibility. It's not even a possibility, it's an almost certainty. But yeah, if you don't hear from us again and find this tape then you've known. You already know that we're dead. So yeah. Basically today we went on a lot of, the roads were quite bumpy, worse than they have been. Um, yeah, and the science of loading the roof wasn't quite right. And now it's more of just kind of stuff put on our roof. Wait, it's a fucking, look how dense that is. So to fix our little roof dilemma, we decided to take everything off and just redo it from scratch, make sure everything's tight. Um, I think we're going to leave some stuff off of the roof that we had on it before. Um, lose a tyre, lose a spare tyre and put some extra bags in the back now that Toby's gone. Oh, 
was awful and time consuming, but it's done now. And the roof's a lot better and the car's a lot better. And it's not too late, it's not dark yet. I guess it's like nine, half eight. <laughs> surface in the world. <laughs> Pure potholes or sand that we can't drive through. Um, so after yesterday our roof rack falling apart and us completely bringing it back together again. Um, today is completely falling apart again in a different way and this time it's uh, pushed, itself for, pushed itself forward instead of back uh, which is equally as worrying if not more worrying. Um, we just got stuck in sand a minute ago which is the second time that's happened. And apparently this road goes on for 400 kilometers and it's consistently bad. So, um, could be interesting. We're thinking of ditching some of our stuff, even more of our stuff on the roof and putting more stuff in the car. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, okay. Why? I'm gonna make
Jake are uh, trying to convince the garage to help us um, using the one Russian phrase that we that we have in our phrase book, which is my car doesn't start. Technically that's untrue because the car is currently running, um, but that's the only mechanic type phrase that we have. So um, we'll see how it goes. I, I have to wait in the car <coughs> and keep my foot on the clutch because if I take my foot off, the, uh, the car will stall for some reason. Um, yeah, they're just talking to the Kazakhstan version of Dennis the Menace at the moment. Well, I'll show you. Um, this guy told us to follow him to another garage, so we did that. Within about two minutes of being there, the guy at this garage picked, like, thought that clearly a wire was disconnected, <laughs> put it where it should be, and the engine started. Um, and then he bolted it on again, and bolted our battery down. And that works. <laughs> We're about 60 clicks from Akutsk, Akutsk, Irkutsk, um, which we've been driving to for the last four days on exactly the same road, the M53. Um, so I'm quite excited to see what it's like. I think it'll probably be not four days worth of driving good, but you never know. <laughs> Baikal, which is the biggest freshwater lake in the world. It's also the deepest lake in the world. Um, bigger than all of the Great Lakes of America put together. True fact, that. So here's where we've been um, surviving off of, more or less, throughout half of Kazakhstan and most of Siberia. A little discovery we made called Bus Lunch. Um, it's basically either powdered mashed potato or instant noodles in a, in a little thing. Comes with a fork, um, a little sachet of meat in sauce, and they're great. that we want.
for the whole journey, we've been saving two sets of biscuits. Oh, hold on. One set of failure biscuits, these wholemeal oat biscuits. And the other were success biscuits. Jam rings. Because we've been successful, we're going to crack open the jam rings. Are they not even broken? No, they've been in the safety. Holy shit. Bit. Um, we're going to crack open the jam so rings and have ourselves a little success meal. You go, Joe? You go, Jordan? We'll Thank just you. have a little. to better times. Cheers, guys. And warmer Sundays. Cheers. Mmm. Sweet, stale taste of success. <laughs> about, yeah. It's about as anticlimactic as the finish line is. <laughs>